come and join the largest and fastest growing social media platform for small boat building and fishing. Come and show your pictures off, show your boats and your fish. Come give advice, come get advice. So this build is all aluminum. There is no plastic totes going into this boat at all. And there will be no wood, at least for the frame on up. So what we are looking at is how do we frame all of this out of aluminum, make all the boxes, make all the side panels as effective and still strong, but light as possible. And so what we were doing for that is we were using 0.025 aluminum sheeting for the majority of the side walls that are just mount, set and forget. But for these that are making up some of the re-accessible panels to make the boat continuously serviceable, we are using 0.040 aluminum for these. I have one major section here. This whole panel will come off and I'll still be able to access everything within a few inches. I could slide something eight or 10 inches down, just not through a whole panel. But we'll have a little joiner piece, super little small thin joiner piece just to give the wall some, some credibility and platform. So you sit next to it and, and actually attach it. Well, this one sits, we'll have another piece right here. This is all cleaned up. We'll kind of clean this wall up. I cleaned all that stupid foam off got that ready for prep so we'll be able to very tactfully bend in some uh, EVA foam and get it in here I'm using black tip I'm using this because really EVA foam is scarce on the internet it's at an all-time high don't tell me why or I mean don't ask me why I don't know but like I have some more actually coming in I found a freak shipment where it was actually in and there was like a few sheets left and I bought it just in time but this stuff is what I'll be using. We will be using this black tip EVA foam to line all the inside hatches that are aluminum in all the boxes, even in the middle cockpit. All right, so first panel down. I gotta go in here and redrill these holes, make sure I know where they were at so that I can actually see them so I can put the screw panel back on to where it belongs. Pretty good, pretty good. Matches the white bottom with the vented floor, so that's good. That's the bigger concern was actually, because we were gonna run camo turf and then we were like, eh. Probably not a good idea. Now I gotta put it aside. After just templating out and making sure it's gonna fit underneath there, I'm cleaning the inside with a water vinegar mix. I found that cleaning the top off with alcohol, it's fine, but alcohol doesn't really take everything off like water and vinegar do. I don't know why it's such a strong cleaner, but it does. And then you hit it with alcohol to get any residual contaminants off. And then the surface is just ready to stick. This black tip stuff works pretty good for being, I think it's off-brand marine mat, whatever it is, that's pretty good for being as cheap as it is and off Amazon. We're gonna go ahead and section these in. Just know for installation tips of anything with a 3M or strong adhesive backing like this stuff, you can just put to place and you can pull it off right in the instance if you need to reposition. But the minute you press on that stuff, that's it. It's there to stay and you'll likely damage the product before you ever get it off. So these short panels are here to stay. They're surrounding the main serviceable panel. The big giant panel we put on there is the serviceable one that we will use at will to modify any sort of electric stuff going on. That's the main electric conduit wall. And for the main electric conduit walls, we use the 0 0.040 because it's just slightly thicker. It's a little bit more heavy. I don't want to use 0 0.040 for the whole thing though. So we got this generous four by 10 uh, 0.025 sheet. It's about the thinnest sheet you can get out of aluminum without it completely tearing off and destroying itself. Okay, we'll be putting angles in these corners. So that's what it'll sit on. And we'll permanently have that in there. If we did this, pieces that we've done things that are starting to come into light that i needed to maybe have taken care of prior we're now starting to deal with but it's not a terribly big deal it's just somewhat annoying we got all these corners done in we're gonna lay that with flat bar there to kind of fill that in and make sure that's solid but this is all kind of boxes we can get a clean edge whenever we overlay the frame 
And then I'm gonna put that. And this, I mean, I want to make note that a lot of this stuff is not in the John Yak kit. I went and outsourced it afterwards to make this. This is a little. This here is a little something else, though. So we just have one here where we have two over there because we're clipping the majority of the wires over there. Over here, we just got one to kind of channel the string of wires we're going to have to come. We have another one, but I stepped on it and bent it. I really don't feel like unbending it or stick it in here. I'm not really sure how necessary it is. But we'll be running. We'll be running LED strips that we that we soldered together and made. That'll be coming out in ports right here. We'll be chaining them together. Really the core is good. The back is gonna need some attention, but not near as much. I'm still undecided on what kind of jack system I'm going to make for the portable live well intake. Just in case I wanna run one on this boat, I need to have the option to run one. And so, you know, that's a thing. Yeah, the back, the back little section is whatever. I mean, I think the lockers are the most crucial part right now, which subsequent, and then we're gonna tackle the core. All right. It's looking very good for an inner core with serviceable walls. Great. So now for the face plates for the rod locker. We are using these golf tubes. They are really skinny and really light and perfect for what we're gonna do. They're also really frail and really hard to taper. The good thing is we'll be able to stick maybe more than I thought. We're gonna examine just how many we can maybe stick in here, but a lot of you asked me how I frame in and make these out. This is how I do it. Simple measuring tape accounting for all the parts. And that would be the three you need. What you also have to take into account is right here and right here the same. Now, if you look, they are. So that means we don't have to do any slight curve, me curve of measurements. So if this is like 10 inches and then this was nine, you'd have to do, you'd have to measure out to where you measure nine and you have to go up, out, out, up an inch, you'd have that curve. So instead of being here, you'd be up here, obviously, but because it's pretty symmetrically flat, which we lucked out on, we can now just do this. Let's see how it fits. Does it fit? Did I not measure it correctly? It's looking... Oh, yeah. Oh, where is it? Oh, I can never find it. Oh, there it is. Sweet. Perfect matchup, but I'll take it. The panel is a little bit thicker than I thought it would be. So maybe we can get more than six. But I do want to have a generous six. One, two, three. Maybe we put one big PVC, just one PVC pipe. We make that one a boss. And then the others are all these weak ass little four, five, six. Jeez, we can stick a lot in here. Man, I just have to buy more of these golf tubes. Uh, can I stick nine rods? I mean, this rod locker is not terribly small. It's the, it's the rails, really, why you can't store nine. But you could probably store seven. And was... All right, so this is a uh, home template. We're, the uh, the grooved stuff over there is not gonna work good for this. And because of that, what we are going to do is try and route this with the hole saw. Now I was given some pretty good advice and I'm gonna try it out. Get some of this started. So now that we got the pilot holes, we are reverse drilling the hole saw. Obviously, 
forward drilling the whole saw would devastatingly ruin everything we got going on. We in the black yet? Oh, we are definitely on that side in the black. No, it doesn't look too bad. Good idea, Phil. On the ratting. Let's do that again, man. Because this is dangerous with the drill, you can just take the whole saw off. You gotta go in there and polish up a little bit. You can just hand turn it in there. Get a little bit of the extra, little extra scruff that's in there. You can kind of turn it free with your hand. I mean, you obviously are not gonna burn through it with your hand, turning it at like 0 0.005 mile an hour. That's good. So we definitely want that to mesh in. So we want a pressure fit of the foam in there. So I think that'll do it. foam should stretch we should be able to get it through that hole if not we can cut it but we should be able to stretch it through actually push 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 and there it is so with that little foam experiment being successful we're now just going to man in the face plates we need two of them all right Got this one in, the back plate here. We stuck the EVA foam on, and now we're ready to put those rod tubes in. Shakespeare plastic grill and ugly stick things raked in more big catfish than I can tell you. Now all we need is to find a temporary way to keep these rod tubes from sliding in and out before we foam them in forever. Okay, I did this simply to temporarily secure them until I pour the pour foam in. I blocked off the one main area. I was going to run two main conduits through that and I thought that's way too much work and even extra weight where I have a big enough gap right here between this box and the next where if I need to fish wire through that little crevice, I'll be able to access this panel and do it. So not, I'll just have to have uh, this entire area completely accessible, which is not necessarily the case for that side, but definitely for this side, we're gonna have to do it that way. This turned out all right. I made some of these bigger down here. You, uh, you know, to compensate rods with bigger eyelids, that's a lie. I just couldn't flare them all the same size. The first time I tried to flare those things, it really sucks to flare these tubes. They're skinny and crappy. But I'll try and use those bigger flare rods. I'm not going to retry and modify or do anything to these tubes. I'll I eventually screw them up. They're super, they're like paper thin. They are whatever they are, but they are uniform in there finally. We pretty much linked them to the exact stock length of what they are, so they're pretty much flush against here. So I shouldn't have any other issues with like foam leaking into the tops. I think we can just go ahead and pour pour foam in around these and they'll do their thing. We'll give it a little bit of safe guidance and I'm kind of excited for this process because I'm slacking a little bit on this. All right, so that's out of the way. I'm gonna do the rest to the other four sections and get off the other side walls. I don't need to bore you with all that. But we're just more or less prepping it all for the foam to pour in. And once all that's done, it's the wiring and it's the decking and then it's onto the water. It's slow, I got all, all kinds of stuff going on right now. It's May, my kids are in school, they're in soccer, they're in this, there's that, there's other people. Um, but I'm cutting everybody off after May, that's it. We're done. And I'm just gonna content, content, content until it gets too hot for me to do anything in my garage. Then I gotta figure out what to do there. Probably go travel during the summer 
to places that aren't gonna kill me with 130 degree garages. We'll see, we'll see, but here it is. We're gonna try and get this thing done before I end up blowing around and traveling for the summer, uh, provided that's that's awarded to us. Thank you guys. See